Hey there, friend. Are you constantly looking for new and inexpensive ways to target articulation therapy? My name is Jessica, and I am a speech language pathologist. And I feel like all too often we get caught up in so many other aspects of our job, the data collection, the report writing, um, that sometimes we forget that we actually need to be teaching skills and not just collecting data or not just trying to get through the session. So I want you to feel super confident every time you walk into your speech room that you're like, you know what, I've got this today. I've got a plan, I've got a strategy, and I'm gonna teach intentionally. So today I am going to show you my go-to articulation teaching activity. These activities can work from auditory discrimination to isolation, to syllables, to words, to sentences, even conversation. I'll show you. All you are going to need is some mini erasers and some buckets. Okay, so let's start by talking about how I would use mini erasers and containers to target um, uh, auditory discrimination. So you will need two containers of some sort, mini erasers, and I also like to use some visual cards. Here's what I do. Okay, so here's how I set it up. I have my two containers and my two visual cards. So say that I was practicing helping a student to auditorily discriminate or hear the difference between the k sound and the t sound. So what we would do is um, I would say the sound, for example, k, and the student would take an eraser and put it in the k bucket. And then I would do the same thing with t. And if I said t, then they would put it in the t bucket. Okay, so the other thing that I always do when I do this is I also show my visual cues. So my visual cue for k is this, and for t is this, t. So I would say, sh show me k, and they would put it in the k bucket, or t, and they would put it in the t bucket. Now, if you wanted to bump that up a little bit, and instead of just targeting auditory discrimination, also target um, making that sound in isolation, you could totally easily do that just by having them practice saying the sound as they put the eraser in the bucket. Now, what I also like to do is if I have three colors, or at least two colors, I'll have red and I'll have green. Um, red is wrong, green is right. If they say the sound in isolation and they say it correctly, then we'll put it in the green bucket. If they say it incorrectly, we'll put it in the red bucket. So that gives them some like responsibility in listening to their sound and identifying, like self-identifying if they're doing, making the sound correctly or incorrectly. Um, so I love to do that. And then using that method of saying a sound correctly or incorrectly, you can do that with words. So if they say the word correctly, you would put it in the green bucket, or if they said the word incorrectly, you would put it in the red bucket. Um, and you can do that the same with sentences. If they said the word in the sentence correctly, or incorrectly it follows the same kind of pattern. Now for conversation, what I would do is I would ask my conversation prompt and I would say, okay, now before we start talking, think about all of the R words as you're going to say them. When you say, oh, sorry, I'm just going to R. <laughs> all of the words with your sound. So we'll use R words. Think about all of the R words and as you say an R word, we're gonna put it in the bucket and that just draws their awareness to it and then at the end we would count it and I would say okay when you answered that question how many R words did we say oh man that's a lot how many did you get right how many did you get wrong and really draw their awareness to that okay so I mentioned earlier about three buckets and here's what I like to do with three I have green is good yellow eh, kind of red totally wrong not so great um, and I do this with R most often because as you know, R and S 
can be on a bit of a spectrum. It can be really, really good. That's a really good R. It can be, oh man, that was a W. Or it can kind of just fall somewhere in the middle. So when I'm first teaching R especially, I like to use the three buckets and help the student identify, yeah, that was a really good clean R. Or, I mean, it kind of, it was not totally wrong, but it wasn't totally right. And then, no, I just didn't get that one that time. So that is, those are my favorite things to do with the mini erasers and the bucket. And um, they're really great for teaching and bringing awareness, the student's awareness of like the sounds and what they're doing. All right, I hope you found that helpful and that gives you some ideas of ways that you can use some containers and mini erasers or small objects in articulation therapy. Let me know in the comments below how you like to use mini erasers in speech therapy. I'm sure there are a million ways. And please don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified when new videos are dropped.